We bring the news. We bring it live. This is 101.9 Chai FM. Good morning and Good morning. welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul, live from Svat. And this morning we are the 29th of June, 2016, the 23rd of Sivan in the year 5776. And um, just I want to dedicate the show to my late uh, stepfather. It was his Yotzat a week or so ago. And it's his Hillel bin Abraham that his soul have an Aliyah and all other Jewish and other souls that need aliyot, that need refuot, that need everything that we need, all the souls, past, present and future. And also, I, I, I keep meaning to make a dedication to Kathy, who is the CEO of Chai FM, and I'm just so grateful to her for, for what she's done over the last eight years, and I think it's coming on for nine years, maybe maybe eight years, I, I must just make sure of that. But what she's pulled off is an absolute miracle, and I often call Chai FM the, the, the miracle radio station. It really is. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kathy. So this morning, um, I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava, and Baruch Hashem that um, Rabbi Anava has been a, a regular co-host, guest together with me, live in Svat, and we've had the privilege of sharing with the world, with beautiful listeners, so many wonderful um, teachings that he teaches and his near-death experience. And again, I urge you to go to his website, um, alonanava.com. Uh, 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 com and uh, see his one-hour, two-hour uh, presentation of his near-death experience. The, 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 it is life-changing. Every single person that I've, I have steered in that direction, it has changed their life. I've got feedback to say it's literally changed their life. And then the people that follow every single other one of um, Alon's teachings and CDs and everything that he's doing. He puts his every breath that he has into this work that, that, that he does. And um, I'm just, I also feel so privileged to, to be sitting next to you and to have the privilege of interviewing you and hearing you speak every single week. And uh, this morning, the show is going to be about saving the world. And it is saving the world by noticing other people. And that is such a powerful, powerful aspect. And we don't realize the power that each of us has on another person's life. You just walk by somebody and you smile at them. Or you just give a kind word. Or you just say hello. It can, it can literally stop people from jumping off bridges. And it has. There have been stories. And I just want to share, uh, there's, there's an amazing story that I heard this week. Uh, a, a, a woman who had 13 children and a husband before the Holocaust, her 13 children and her husband were murdered in the Holocaust. And then she came to America, remarried, and she had one son. He became very, very successful, very, very wealthy, and he was sitting at his mother's deathbed. And she was very, very lucid, and uh, she had never, ever told him how much she loved him, how much she appreciated him. And he did understand on an intellectual level just um, how, uh, how hard it was for her to get emotionally connected to him after such an experience. But he longed for it. And then on her deathbed, three days before she died, she said, I have something to tell you. And he thought, oh, finally she's going to say the words. And she said to him, she managed to say to him, I am so proud of you. And he said a couple of days before that, he had just closed a hundred million dollar deal. That he felt like, he, he felt like a million dollars. He felt like he owned the world. But he says those words from his mother was nothing in comparison to what the, um, the the deal felt like in you know in terms of um, you know what uh, how successful he was in the deal, 
And that's the influence that we have on each other. So along, um, we also had a Friday night, a marathon Friday night, till five o'clock in the morning. And uh, you know, I just, I, uh, I just, I, I'm in awe of you in that your tenacity in helping other people, in speaking to other people. This young couple were at a crossroad in their lives. And you took the time, you took uh, so much time just to be with them. And um, so that kind of gave birth to the, the thoughts of the show of saving the world one person at a time. And um, so uh, saving the world one person at a time. And it also ties in with Yael's show just, bef uh, just before this, where she was speaking uh, to somebody from the from SADC, that's the um, South African, um, so it's an uh, organization that speaks to people that are suffering from depression and helps them. So it's interesting that that's, that's there, that the energy's there. And then you were saying just before we started the show that um, the increase since Rosh Hashanah of suicides. So over to you, Alon. Um, well, first of all, good morning. And, and you know, you mentioned before that you pre feel privileged, but I feel also honored. And we're doing the shows together and my own followers that never never uh, heard of High FM are also enjoying the shows. We posted online, we posted on uh, YouTube and on SoundCloud and iTunes. Uh, my editor is working hard that two, three hours after the show, it doesn't go live, but two, three hours after the show, it goes online. And I'm getting such amazing feedback from listeners, from my own followers, that they enjoy the show. So now we're starting to advertise on my platforms that they can go to Chai FM and uh, log in and hear it live. So it's also my privilege and honor so I can reach, to broaden my reach. And that, I'm, that we're able to, you know, technology is so amazing that you can literally reach any corner in the world. Yes. And I keep teaching that technology was given to us only for that cause. Yes. I mean, the, basics, the basic reason why we got technology is to prepare us for Mashiach. That's why we really got technology, because Mashiach is coming very soon, and we got to learn to relate with the concept of Mashiach, because if you would expose the idea of Mashiach even 50 years ago, with the technology that we have now, people will not relate with it. My grandmother 10 years ago, when we used to Skype with her, she couldn't understand how we're sitting in, in Israel and she's sitting in Australia and she sees us through a screen. So the technology is coming to really prepare us for the, for the gula, for the redemption. And one of the main things is that we see that with technology, in an instant, thousands and millions of people can be one. Yes. And that's what we're going to find out when Mashiach is going to come, that we're all one. Yes. That we're all one soul. And the technologies that we have is actually giving us the opportunity to relate to the fact that we are one. Now, maybe right now we have different bodies, but we can easily reach millions of people in one shot. I can spread my word to millions of people with no problem. And technology is allowing me, I don't have to be somebody famous even. I can put a post on one of the social net networks and thousands of people will see it instantly. So technology was given to us to really not only spread God's word and not only to prepare us for the coming of the redemption, but to make us realize that we are one and we're not separated from each other. Yes. Because for years, you know, the world was based on the fact that we are separated from each other and families that were distant from each other, who would see each other? They would see each other every 10 years. Or send a letter. Today you send the text messages 20 times an hour. <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, I grew up in Eretz Israel. My mother is Australian, so her parents were in Sydney. And we, you know, once a year we used to talk. It was like a big thing. But Hashem, after the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this oneness and how technology can bring us together. Okay, so stand back. From the top to music, from Johannesburg to Israel, sport to business, this is 101.9 High FM. Good morning and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And we live from Svat and I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava. And we are speaking about saving the world 
by noticing others. Really, it's, it's like one person at a time. And uh, just in, in the break, Alon was saying that in terms of the messianic time, we're going to realize that we are one. We, and, and that's the truth. The, the rest is an illusion. It's, it's not real that we are separated. So um, you, you were talking about, before the break also about the, the, t the technology is uh, actually that's what its purpose is, is to bring us together and to reveal Mashiach because yeah. Mashiach is waiting. Yeah, he's waiting for us to, to, to be ready. Yes. Yeah, and you know, the, one of the first uh, revelations in the Torah is that after God created the world, the last thing that he created was Ad, uh, the first man, Adam Arishon, the first man. And right after that, he said, Adam liot levado. It's not good for the man to be by himself. Now, the context is actually referring to the fact that all the animals were created, were created with, uh, with two genders. And the only one who was created single was Adam. So the text is talking about that it's not good for Adam as a man to be by himself, and therefore I will create for him a helpmate. But the Torah also has more depth to it, just more beyond what we just read. And when it's talking, it's not good for a person to be by himself, it's already hinting to us that God created us as, as a group because it's not good for us to be by, himself, by, by ourselves. Mm. And Adam Arishon, Adam, he was created single, just him. And he got very upset that when he saw all the animals, has, ha, they have a helpmate, he also wanted one. And, you know, the first commandment that they got is to be fruitful and multiply. And already then the Torah was hinting to us that we are depending on each other. Yes. That we need, we can be uh, selfish and we can be by ourselves. Because even if a person wants to be left alone, Spiritually and mentally and emotionally, it's not good for a person to be by himself. No. And unfortunately, the, the, the technology also has a bad side to it, because technology can also make people very, very isolated. Mm -hmm. People in, the, you know, in their own home can shop from their home, can see movies from their home, they chat with friends over all the networks that are available. So technology also has a bad side to it that one can really be isolated. One needs to take the technology and, and, and use it to a positive thing, but the point is, what I was trying to make before about technology is that, that the fact that we can talk and thousands of people can listen to us, that's a very, very, you know, mashiach dik time. It's a yes. very, it's a time that's hard for us to understand. Yes. Tell that to somebody 20 years ago, they will not <laughs> understand even what you're talking about. The point is that... At, as much as we feel connected and we're surrounded with tools that allow me to be connected to the world, I have a phone and I have a home phone and I have emails and I have social network accounts and I have so many ways to communicate with everybody, but at the end of the day, most people are, are by themselves. Now, the reason for that is it can be blamed on many different things. That's not the point right now is what to blame it on. Rather to see where, how are we finding a solution to the point yes. that... People are isolated, in, even in a family. You know, there's always these videos and jokes going around on the social network that you see, like, uh, not too long ago, somebody shared with me a video that you see a family, and they're all sitting and eating, but they're all with their phones, yes. and they're texting, and, and it's not a joke. It's actually yeah, very, very it's sad. Not a joke. The reality is that, that we, 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 use, we tend to use things that are made for a positive purpose into a, a negative purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is the secret of the tree of knowledge. It's called Sod Et Sadah, the secret of, of good and bad. That everything in the world was created with an option that can be used for something positive and with an option that it can be used for something negative. And here I need to take the Torah, because the Torah comes from the word Hora'ah. Hora'ah means to teach. And the Torah teaches me how do I see the difference between what's good and what's, what, what's bad. Because if I wouldn't have the Torah, I would not know that pork is not a good animal for me to eat. Mm. And that I'm not allowed to do certain things. The Torah comes and teaches me, these animals you can't eat, and these certain acts you're not allowed to do, you can't steal and you can't cheat. So the Torah comes to teach us, it's a manual. So the Torah also comes and teaches me how I'm supposed to interact with other people. 
And the basic and the foundation of the entire Torah that was repeated by many of our sages is, is that I have to have what's called about Israel. I have to have this love to another person. And you know, one of the pillars of our, of our sages, the known Rabbi Akiva, when he was asked, he says, that you love a person, another person, a fellow person like yourself, this is the major rule in the Torah. Yes. And the last couple of shows we were talking about the mystical pillar of our, of our Torah, the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, who was buried here in Sfat. And if you go down to his grave, you see that it says on his grave, I am there, I'm accepting on myself a mitzvah, a positive mitzvah of loving another person. Wow. And this is how we start our day. If you look at most of the prayers that are going by his nosa, by his style, we start by that, that I accept on myself the mitzvah, it's a positive mitzvah. To love another person like as if, he's, like as if it's me. Yes. And if I apply this every day, that's why in, in the prayer books, in the Sidurim, based on the Nostach of the Rizal, that's how we start the day. Mm -hmm. Because if I will take on myself the mitzvah, a positive mitzvah, that today let me practice that I'm going to love another person like as if it's myself, like as if it's me. And if every person would take on himself a project of loving one person equal to himself, mm -hmm. then imagine how many millions of people are going to be Fell, feeling this love coming from another person. Yes, yes. And the point is exactly how you said before. A person can be a millionaire. A person yes. can be a, a, a superstar. A person can be the most famous, successful person in the world. But all he needs and all he cares about is one individual to say one word. Yes. And all the rest of the things are minimized compared to one nice word coming from the right person. Not from a random person. A random person is also good. But coming from the right person, the trick is to understand that each and every one of us is that right person <laughs> to many others. As much as we feel that we're worthless or we're not important or we're just another person, each and every one of us has a, a group of people that, the, that our word is that valuable word that's going to come from the right person. Yes. It can be my child, it can be my wife, it can be my neighbor, it can be a, a, my, my employer. Just one word can change a, a, total, a, a, a person's total life. Yes. And I met so many opportunities that, that people, that I met a person randomly, and just by saying one nice word, even good morning, you know, we were so isolated. We yes. walk in the street where we're, either our heads is in the phone yes. or the head is somewhere else in a cloud and we don't even notice that there's anybody around us. Yes. And Bezad Hashem, after the break, I want to share a, a short story and, and we'll see how the, the importance and how valuable our words are. Okay, okay. We're going to go to our second break. We'll be back now. If you haven't entered one of the many competitions or giveaways on IFM, you definitely should. The best part of your day at the heart of your community. All the talk, all the music, all the news. Hi, FM. Good morning Good morning and welcome to the Cabana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And this morning we are live from Svat and I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lun Anava and we are talking about saving the person, uh, saving the world and saving the person and every single person in this world one person at a time just by noticing others and just to get straight into your story you're going to sh share a story uh, before the break uh, now i was about to say that we don't even realize how powerful our words are and a lot of people don't find the time and the importance of sometimes it's just even listening it's not about saying anything and the story was that, that one time, in about 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, Baruch Hashem, I'm up almost 24 <laughs> hours a day. So it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I get an email, and I have a, 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 a video online that I, somebody asked me about suicide and how uh, the Judaism is looking on suicide. And in the video, I answered whatever I answered. I don't even remember what I answered in the video, but basically saying that we're not, you know, nobody's allowed to commit suicide, Jews and non-Jews, the same. We're not allowed to take our life. It's not our body, and it's not yes. our life to decide what we want to do with it. 
So this particular individual emailed me in the middle of the night, it was about three o'clock in the morning, and he told me I, just, um, I was about to commit suicide, and just out of curiosity of what was waiting for him, what's waiting for me, I, I ran some searches on Google and YouTube, and your video came up, and I saw from your video that you're saying in a very harsh way that it's very, it's, it's very bad, and the result is bad, and, and you kind of scared me in your video. So I wanted just to make sure that you're really <laughs> saying the truth in that video, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so, I'm so uh, depressed and I'm ready to commit suicide. Chas v'shalom. So, Baruch Hashem for technology, I replied to him right on the spot and I told him, this is my number, call me right now, or send me your number. Yes. So I waited about 10 minutes and an email came back with his number and I called him. Yes. And we started talking, and he was like, is, are you, is that really you? I can't believe you really actually answered me. Yes. And we started talking, and we ended up talking for about three hours. Wow. And three hours that he was, uh, you know, trying to convince me why yes. he should kill himself. And I'm trying to convince him why he should <laughs> not kill himself. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds bizarre, but it wow, sounds, that's, that's the way we live in. Huh? Yeah, it's very, very unfortunate. And he had a very good, uh, very good case. Yes. He had a very good case. Uh, he presented his case very yes. good. <laughs> but the bottom line was that Baruch Hashem, Hashem gave me the right words just to, to convince him not, not to do it. And Baruch Hashem, up until today, he's one of my students, and he's grown to levels that it's unbelievable to look back. To, to realize that a couple years ago he wanted to kill himself and now he is, he's keeping Shabbat and he's doing a lot of mitzvot and he's in a totally different place. The point is not, to, not to, uh, that, that the story should make me sound like a hero. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is that it was 3 o'clock in the morning and my Yetzirah was telling me, it's 3 o'clock, go to bed. Because you have to wake up in the morning tomorrow to pray. And you have to do a lot of other things. And why are you wasting your time now? The point is that we don't know how sometimes the, the, the supreme supervision, what's called Hashgara Prati, the divine providence, put somebody in your path because you are the one who has to say something. Yes. And, and even though it doesn't sound to you like the right thing to yes. say, yes. even if you feel awkward, even if you feel like, what am I going to say? Who, who am I even? You were placed in this, play, in this position at the right time to say the right thing. To say what's on your mind. And the reality is that, you know, the older Rebbe, the, the, the founder of the movement of Chabad, the, the, he's, he's known in many different titles, the Baratania, the older Rebbe, the, his name is Rabbi Shneo Zalman from Leadi. He says that a person will come down to this world for 70, 80 years, for one time, yes. to do a favor to another Jew. Wow. That's it. Wow, wow, so wow. we can live our life for 70, 80 years go through their entire lifestyle for one time, somewhere along the way, to do a favor to somebody. Mm -hmm. And that favor can be just listening, mm -hmm. just saying hello, just saying something. The point is that we don't realize how much other people, they might look on the, on the outside very, very happy and content and, and things look good to them. But the inside is a, is a struggle and, and there's a, and a whole war going on in there. And usually people don't open up and they share their pain. Mm. The point is, is, is not only to look at my own pain. Yes, we're all having problems. Yes. Every human being in our generation is dealing with severe problems. And there's many reasons for that. One of the reasons is because right before Mashiach is coming and we have to, we have to clean the rest of the dirt from us. And there's many, reason for, many reason, reasons why we're all going through something. But if you think you're the only one who's going through something, you're wrong. Mm. Every individual person in this life, in this generation, is battling something horrible. People lose their money, people lose their loved ones, people are, are hopeless. Every person is dealing with something. The point is to understand that even if I'm dealing with some, something, other people are also dealing with yes. something. And I might be the address, I might be the shoulder that somebody needs to lean on. Yes. And when a person realizes that his words and his acts and his attention affects another person tremendously, this is, by the way, the secret how to remove my problems. Because God tells us, you make your will my will and I make, make my will your will. And this is said in the Mishnah, which means that Hashem is telling you, in other words, you worry about my problems, I'll worry about your problems. 
So when I take of my time to worry about another person's problems by caring and listening, then Hashem removes my problems away from me. And the point is that the, one of the biggest mitzvot out there, the biggest commandments, is, is loving another person, just showing love to another person. And we don't realize how much it's affecting another person. And, and one, one thing that I noticed, the last couple of years, Baruch Hashem Hashem gave me the school, the merit to, to, to teach a lot and to affect a lot of people. And, and I'm trying to use the, the technology as much as possible to, to do that spreading videos online and, and audios and whatever whatever method I can. And a lot of the times I get a little bit discouraged, but you know what? I'm talking to a screen yes. or I'm talking to a lens. Yes. And yes, I do talk a lot in, in live audience, but a lot of the times I'm talking to a screen. Yes. Right now I'm talking to a microphone. Yes. So the microphone is not nodding his head and the microphone is not telling me you did a great job. So sometimes I... I feel a little bit discouraged. Maybe, maybe nobody cares what I'm talking about. <laughs> maybe I'm just wasting my time. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, I get an email of somebody saying, you know, you don't know, you don't know me, you don't know who I am. I just wanted to let you know that I heard that video or I heard that lecture or, or I just listened to you and you changed my life. You affected my life. Yes. And I just wanted to know that your words affect people. Yes. And this is the same level of the story that you started, that this millionaire, he didn't care what the world thinks. Mm -hmm. He needed somebody close to him saying, I'm proud of you, you're doing a good job. Yes. The point is that each and every one of us, we have the power to destroy worlds and to, to build worlds. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just by turning to another person and just asking, how are you? Yes. And you, you can't even imagine what you did to that person. Yes. Now I'm dealing with this young man who, who's really lost. He somehow found himself uh, in Israel. He's going through a very hard time and the divine providence brought us together. And we, we, you know, we spent some time and I you know, gave him some advice what I think he should do. And then I didn't hear from him for 10 days. And the first few days I was like, I'll wait for him to contact me. And after a couple of days I got busy and every day he was on my mind. I was like, I should contact him, see how he's, go how he's doing. And after 10 days, I took the initiative and I sent him a message. And I told him, I listen, listen, I didn't hear from you for 10 days. I want to make sure you're okay, that you're safe, that you, that you actually followed through what I told you. And I just wanted to check that you're okay. And without even seeing, I could feel in his message the smile that it caused Aww. on the other side of the, of the metal device that is called yes. a phone. Yes. And he replied with an answer and he said, I just, I know you're very busy. I didn't want to take more of your time. You gave me so much of your time. I know you're busy. But just from the tone of his message, I felt that, that just by me, uh, uh, you know, reaching out to him and just telling him, I just wanted to see how you are, yes. that, you, that you're good, that you're, that you're safe, that you have where to stay, that you, that you have where to eat, that, you, that you're going on the path you need to go on. I literally could feel the, the vibe on, on his voice come, uh, calling back. Like as if he couldn't believe that, what? Somebody out there that doesn't know me, yes. he's not my family, he's not my father, he's not anyone for me. Yes. I randomly met him. Yes. And he cares about me? Yes. I knew, I mean, I didn't do that for that call. I really cared to see what's going on with him. But I could feel that this one minute of attention made such a difference in this young man's life that somebody actually cares about him. Yes. That somebody out there cares if he's eating or if he's hungry or if he has where to sleep yes. or if he's happy today. Yes. And the point is that each and every one of us can do it. You don't have to be a special person for that. No. You just have to be a little bit focused yes. on other people's needs. Yes. It can be your husband, it can be your child. You know, the closest people to you are the ones who really need one nice word. Yes. You know, your child comes back home from school, just ask him, how was school? Did you, you know, I, my kids come home from school, they have all these games, they play with marbles, they play with cards. I asked him, did you, I asked if one of, one of my kids, he plays with marbles. I, one of the questions I asked him, did you win marbles today? <laughs> did you win some cards today? Yeah. He doesn't want to hear me asking him, uh, what did you learn today? Uh, he yeah. doesn't want, he wants to see what my father cares if I want two marbles, if I want five marbles. Mm. The point is that we don't, we don't realize how our attention is literally a life force 
to withering flowers out there. Yes. And it can be in our home, and it can be the most random person out yes. there. And, and it's, I feel that often love is like a boxing ring, where you, you enter into this boxing ring and get knocked down time after time after time. When you do, Hashem gives you, this, Hashem gives you the strength. That's what I believe, to keep getting up. And then sometimes you actually need somebody to step into the ring and to actually help you up, bleeding, and to pour some water into your mouth, to rub your shoulders, to say, exactly. you can do it, you can go another round. Um, you know, th th this is the world. Uh, I, I think the, a, a lot of people um, have maybe a little bit of rose-tinted glasses where they think that life is supposed to be rosy and happy and um, all smiley faces, that they don't realize that there is work to be done here. And I think, um, especially, you know, the Jewish people, it's our mandate. It's our mandate to be a light unto the nations and to, to direct and to uh, help um, not, not only ourselves and our families, but to help the rest of the nations. And so in that boxing ring, to keep, to, 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 when you see somebody down, to help them get up. And, um, you know, my, my own life experience with, with depression, where I was constantly knocked down, and uh, uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, Hashem gave me the strength to keep getting up and putting people around me that actually just at the right time said the right things the, the, um, and then also what made a, made a difference for me is that um, I made a kind of a deal with Hashem, you know, that you look after me, I look after you in that I will look out there, I will notice people, I will notice that a tzedakah cup is attached to a hand, to a person, to an individual that is, that is sitting there, that has a whole life history. It's a person, it's a human being created by Hashem, it's precious. And, and people don't see past that. Yep. You know, you said this is a beautiful analogy about the boxing ring is that one thing that most people don't realize is that people project that they're strong. Yes. Because when you look at a person's exterior and they don't necessarily cry all day long, you, you, you think they're strong. And the reality is that most people are not so strong. Yes. And, and inside, I mean, the, the exterior looks strong, but the inside is very fragile. Mm. And the problem is a lot of people, they don't have a, a, a I wouldn't say low self-esteem, but they don't, they're not so confident in their own abilities. Yes. That they need somebody to tell them exactly what you said. You can do it. Yes. Their assurance coming from somebody else that they can actually do it. Because ultimately we all have this power in us. Mm. Exactly how you said. God is dwelling in us and He gives us the power. Mm. But we, for whatever reason, we don't... We don't feel that we have this power. We, we kind of tend to underestimate our powers. Yes. And, and when a person comes and says, you can do it, this, this empowers this, this, this internal power in, in a person because, hey, he thinks I can do it? Then probably I can. Mm. So it's exactly, it's a beautiful analogy of you said with the boxing ring. It's exactly like that because when you're in the ring, you're getting punched and you're mm. getting beaten up and pushed. And you just want to quit. Yes. And then your trainer in the back <laughs> screams, you can do it. You hit back. And the reality is that exactly how you said, we, sh we are these, these trainers. Yes. That sometimes it's just an encouraging word. Even if you think differently, it's not about what you think. Mm -hmm. It's about telling another person, you know, these words of encouragement. Even if it's something very small. You, like, you know, somebody did something and you did, wow, you did a very good job, or wow, you did, it looks beautiful. Even if it doesn't look beautiful, it doesn't matter. The point is that these, these encouraging words, that this, this, these words build people. And I see it mainly, I really put my, my emphasis in with that with my kids. Yes. Yesterday, my five-year-old came with some scribble or something, and he came so proud yes. to show it to me. Yes. 
And, and all he needed to hear is me saying, wow, I can't believe it, and throwing all these, you know, these comments, uh, I can't believe how you made the colors and this, and that's what he needed to hear. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to hear anything else. And two minutes of, of attention, that's it. You, you, this is more like, it's like a thousand lollipops mm -hmm. or anything else. And unfortunately, in our generation, we shut relationships down with, a, with like a gift. Yes. Kids are shut down in our generation with plastics. You buy them yes. a plastic toy, yes. that's it, shut up. Yes. And, and even in the, in, in the, in the mature world, you, you, we, people tend to shut things down with, 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 with something, things, yeah. with all sorts of things. Yes. Instead of just, you know, one word. You know, and I have the privilege of teaching and guiding a lot of groups of women. And, and when I need to talk to their husbands, I tell them, you don't understand, your wife doesn't care about a car or a diamond ring or anything else or that you're making a lot of money and you're providing a nice home. She just needs you to walk home and say you look beautiful today or the dinner is real good or thank you for ironing my clothes. I appreciate your support. That's all. That's what she needs. Exactly. And the reality is there will be only these, these couple words of encouragement and, and, and appreciation. So we're going to go to our third ad break and we'll be back now. Who are the people we know as our sages? Who are the personalities? What were their life stories? For an hour of inspiration from history, join Rabbi Danny Sachstein every Wednesday at 1 p.m. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And we live from Svat and I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava. And um, also I just want to mention the SMS line of 34519. And uh, there have been some SMSs coming through. The, uh, I always n notice that uh, these kind of shows really elicit uh, a lot of response from the listeners. There's um, a, re a response here of a lady, uh, she's um, speaking about suicide, but it's that, uh, that uh, our, um, it's going to take up a lot of time, and I really want to go on to the more encouraging aspect of the show that I, that, that I really want, I want to share and, and to put across for people to hear, because people need positivity, they need encouragement, and um, also in my pr preparation for the show, I was um, listening to, to, uh, to, to a shear, and um, the story of Yosef Hatzadik, you know, when he resisted Potiphar's wife, um, how did he do that? How did the 17-year-old gorgeous guy that was a slave, he's, you can imagine what his self-esteem could have been bashed down to, living in a prison for 12 years, nobody knowing that he's alive or dead, but he knew, he knew his father knew he was alive. And Yaakov Avinu did not sit shiva, he refused to re receive any um, yeship, uh, shiva calls. And because he knew that his son was still alive. He did not give up on him. And when that temptation came, it's, so the, uh, from what I heard is that the, his father appeared to him. But a deeper, the, the sense that I get, the deeper thing is his father appeared to him to encourage him. You can do this. You can push past this temptation. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the, the, rep the, the repercussions of getting through that temptation, what Yosef Hatzadik gave to us in our DNA, further down the line as Jews, is monumental. So it, it, his father did not give up on him. His father, um, beyond and, and above, did not give up on him, and he knew it. And to, for people out there to know that one person cares, whether it's a parent, whether it's family, whether, and, and, and this is where grandparents come in, and I'm speaking to the grandparents. Grandparents, your job is not over. 
Your job is actually just begun. The minute these babies are conceived and born, you have a huge role to play in your, ch your grandchildren's upbringing. It's a safe place to go. It's, it's a softness. It's a, there's no judge, judgment. It's unconditional love that you can give to your grandchildren. You can encourage them. You can... And, and, and just that they know that you are not giving up on them, that you are a safe place to come to, can save their lives. And there are many children that are going off the derich and chas v'sholem are jumping off buildings. And you, you mentioned that just before, uh, from Rosh Hashanah till now, that there is an unprecedented amount of people, individuals that are committing suicide. It's horrible just to hear of something like that. But the truth is that the truth is that many people they they find a, a, a dead end. They come to a dead end for whatever reason. Uh, unfortunately, our generation is not an easy generation. There's many troubles and many many hardships. And instead of you know emphasizing how bad things are, the point is that each and every one of us, even we are stuck in the mud. What actually takes me out of my mud is knowing that I can actually make somebody else happy and help them. Yes. I had a period in my life that I was going through a very uh, hard period. That we can make a show just on that. Yes. Uh, the power of trusting in God that can do anything He wants. But the thought that was holding me and that was giving me a lot of encouragement is knowing that my mother is out there yes. and she needs me to be strong for her. Yes. That particular one, I know. I knew my father is a strong man. Uh, that I didn't have a problem. I knew he's fine. He's dealing with the situation. I knew that it, I can't afford be crack down or however you say it, because it will affect my mom. Yes. I had to be on the, put on my best behave, my best show to encourage her and to tell her it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. I'm good. Just knowing that it will affect how it will affect her. And sometimes we do have to pretend. Sometimes we have to pretend, especially parents, that, you know, a father has a, a, a lot of pressure, you know, no money or problems in the business, or a mother has her own pressures. You have to think five minutes before you walk through the door, is you have to take a, a five-minute break and to think, how am I coming into the home right now? Am I coming with all the baggage that I have from the from the this long day and I'm gonna start screaming at everybody? Or am I leaving my problems behind because there are my problems? My kids don't need to deal with my problems. And the world doesn't need to deal with my problems. It's my problems. Mm -hmm. I need to deal with my problems. Mm -hmm. And if a person takes a, a couple minute break two, three times a day to take a deep breath and to say, before I'm starting my next meeting, whether it's going into my home, going into my job, the world doesn't need to suffer because I have problems. It's my problems. I have to deal with it. That's a whole different uh, uh, thing right now. How am I dealing with my own problems? That's a whole different thing. But the world doesn't need to deal with my problems. Rather, if I try to, to deal with the world's problems, my problems will slowly, slowly disappear. But the reality is that each and every one of us shouldn't look at himself as I'm, I have to be the receiver, I'm the poor person, I'm going through a hard time, I have to get this encouragement. Yes, you're right, you should, you do. You do. But you, you, you get what you give. Yes. And if you take one person or one hour, or it doesn't matter, but you make place in your life to affect another person, to remove your problems for one second. Yeah, you know, this, uh, this I talk about it a lot in many of my lectures, that what stops us from, from having success in any place is our ego. Yes. And, and most people, they will become depressed or, or reach a dead end because of their ego. Mm. Because the business deal didn't work out, the love didn't work out, the relationship didn't work out, this didn't work out. Therefore, now um, uh, you know, a person turns to a completely different path and uh, ends up being depressed. And that's only because my ego was hurt. So if I learn how to diminish my ego, which is uh, uh, the main reason why we came down to this world, is to step over our ego. When I know how to, to, to diminish my ego and to 
not to look at myself for one second and to look at other person's needs, that's actually when I'm saving my own problem, my, my own self. Yes. Because I'm not concentrating on my own problems, I'm concentrating on somebody else's problems. Yes. So my problems just slowly, slowly disappear. Yes. Because God tells me, I want you to help another person. Yes. You help another person, you take out of your time to help another person, I'll help you. Don't worry. And you should try it. Every person should uh, adopt to himself, whether it's a child, a person, a friend, somebody. I mean, I would tell you to do it with 10 people, not with one yes, person. Yes, the I point is that I you have, have to, if you constantly in the motion mm -hmm. of helping another person, then your problems will slowly just disappear yes. because you're making space and you're creating room for somebody to come into your life and help you. Yes. So you give out, you project into the world a positive energy, it will come back to you. Yes. So if you start your day by saying to another person a nice word, and you're being nice to your kids and your wife, your husband, your co-worker, it doesn't matter. You are projecting this motion of giving, yes. then the world is going to start throwing that motion back at you. Yes. So your own problems will be solved. Yes. The point is to constantly be in a motion of thinking of another person. This is basically what the Torah is constantly teaching us is that I constantly have to think of another person's needs, not on my needs. My needs are going to be given to me and are going to be fulfilled by God. Mm. Of course, I have to follow His commandments. I have to make sure that I'm following what He tells me to do, that I'm not doing anything that He prohibits me to do. The Torah is very clear. But besides that, you know, you know being a mensch is much more important than many other things. Mm. Our Mishnah tells us, you know, Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah, uh, being kind to another person is more important than learning the entire Torah. So if I put in my, my highest priority into my agenda, where am I helping another person today? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people contact me and they tell me, I did tshuva. I, I, I now on a totally different path. How can I fix the problems that I did in the past that I don't know how to fix? I lied a thousand times. I said Lashonara five thousand times. Mm -hmm. I, I did so many things that I don't even know how to repair. So I tell them the only way to repair the things that you did in your past that you don't know how to find them. I mean, if you stole something and you have it, you can give it back or you can reimburse the person. But if you lied to somebody or if you said Lashon Ara 20 years about, about somebody, how can, you how can you fix that? The only way of fix fixing that is by being kind to another person. Yes. It's by helping another person, doing charitable acts, acts of kindness. And this is the ultimate way of how to fix things that you did in the past that you don't know how to really fix them. Yes. Because ultimately, when Hashem sees you going out of your way to help another person, He removes all His business to help you. Okay, so we're just going to go to our last break and I can't believe how the time has just flown. She's young, she's smart. Good morning and welcome to the Kavona Show, Body, Mind and Soul, live from Sfat. And I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anifer, of absolute privilege. And we are speaking about saving the world. And we are speaking about saving the world by noticing others and really one person at a time to try and uh, ad adopt an, an attitude and to start with oneself, to be kind to oneself. To be uh, to start with one's family, in in just uh, kind words, kind thoughts, and then to e extend outwards. And Hashem, we we never short of opportunities to actually um, help another person. Never ever. I, I've, I've, every single time I step outside, there's an opportunity. I just need to actually notice. And not look down, as you say, uh, look down and, and, and then also not to get too lost in my own stuff, is to uh, lift my head up and to really look into the face of another person. And um, so just in, in, in wrapping up, how, how do we really uh, get in there and help people to keep getting up because um, th there's people think that you know medication is the way to get up people think that you know maybe the the bottom of a bottle is going to help them get up uh, various addictions are going to help them get up uh, 
just from what I've learned is those kind of things are going to knock you down even further. So just sitting here live in Svat, surrounded by opportunities to do a, a, a lot of goodness here, every single one of us has an opportunity in the rest of the world to do uh, every single minute of the day, even if it's just praying for somebody else as well. There's numerous things what one can do, and really we need uh, like a 10-hour show just to start even touching things. But ultimately, one needs to have God in his life. If you don't have God in your life, then you don't have any structure. And, I mean, you don't have to be... People look at me, and they see a long beard and a black yarmulke and the whole costume, and they're like, I don't want to be like you. I mean, I don't want to be fanatic. And my answer is, you don't have to be fanatic. You have to follow the Torah. I mean, I choose how to get dressed. Hashem doesn't get impressed if I'm dressed with a black suit or, or a blue shirt. The point is that all the Jews, they have to have God in their life. And if you're missing God in your life, then don't be surprised where, where voids in you starting to appear. And it's not about just doing, okay, I'll just do 20% of the mitzvot. You can't do 20%. You have to do all mitzvot. There's no discounts in the Torah for senior citizens or for people, uh, you know, with a certain situation. Mm. The Torah is equal for everybody. And one first needs to have 100% of the Torah in his life. Once you have that, then first of all, Hashem is already dwelling in you. Mm. When Hashem is dwelling in you because you are pure, then you're never going to be depressed. You're never going to be uh, uh, sad. You're never going to be anything opposite from, from happy and content because Hashem is in you. Hashem told us when we left, the, 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 uh, uh, when we left Egypt and we were walking in the desert, Hashem told us, You should build me a, a mikdash, a, a tabernacle, a, a dwelling place, and I will dwell in you. Now, if, I, if I'm already building my body as a tabernacle to God, then God will dwell in me. And if God is dwelling in me, I'll never have anything negative in me because I have this power of God shining in me. So first of all, every person needs to have God in his life. And, and whatever level you're holding, it's never enough. You have to add more and more and more. And, and, and do it in the right way. And people are very far away from that. And slowly, slowly they have to, 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 to incorporate the, the life of Torah and mitzvahs. But the next step is to really internalize that I need to care about another person. Yes. When I care about another person, it's like a little sick kid that you buy him a puppy. Yes. Why? Because you want him to care about the little dog, so he's forgetting about the fact that he's sick. Yes. And we're all sick. Essentially, if you're looking yeah. at it, we, 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 we're battling something. Sadness or, or disappointment or loss. We're all battling with something. So we just have to buy ourselves a little, a little, I don't want to say a puppy because <laughs> it doesn't sound so nice, but if I adopt in my life somebody that I'm taking responsibility to help that person with all my heart, then by default I'm helping myself. Because yes. I'm making room for, for, for Hashem to create miracles. And the point yes. to take from this short interview is that your words are extremely powerful and your actions are powerful and your smile is powerful and your helping hand is powerful. You don't even know how much you're affecting another person. Forget about your own problems. This is not the right way of looking at, oh, I have problems. Mm -hmm. I know you have problems. I also have problems. We all have problems. But that's not the point. The point is that I have to realize that other people have problems and I can be the one who's reaching that hand to pull them out. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, somebody will do that for me. Yeah. Yes. And really to take from this show, one very simple thing is that really we, 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 we depend on each other. And when one word can change the entire world, yes. and one act I can change a person's life. And I should be the one who, who incorporates that. And each and every one of you should adopt not one person, ten people. Yes. That you're taking your time that I'm going to now make sure that I'm smiling to that person. I walk into that store, I'll say, good morning, how are you? How is your kids? Oh, he cares about my kids. How is this? How is that? What happens? You know, all these questions. Sometimes it's just a question, but you do it really. Do, do it real. Don't yes. do it fake. Yes. The point is that another person, the, the other person on the other side of the room wants your attention and your love, and you have that power to give it to him, and you can literally, literally save worlds. Yes. And don't, don't, be, don't think of yourself. Don't worry. You think of somebody else, your plate is going to be full. Absolutely. I'm to that. And Alon, uh, thank you so much for being with me this hour. And I thank 
my beloved listeners for being there. And I want to acknowledge the SMSs that have come through. I, we just uh, ran out of time in order to read them. And thank you for sending them. And just keep getting up and keep helping somebody else to get up. And with that, to have the most beautiful Wednesday, the most beautiful rest of your week, and the most beautiful Shabbos from Kavona. Baba. We bring the news. We bring the action. We bring it live. This is 101.9 High FM.